we get started, hi, I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources, and I'm here today, and we're going to be doing a whole heap of stuff on, as you can see, Halloween, because it is at the end of the month. I know it's early, and it's only the beginning of October, but um, if you do celebrate Hall Halloween or do something in your classroom in regards to it, um, this might be something that you might want to do some other activities, which sort of lead into it. Now, I'm hoping... And I do say hoping that if I'm actually back in the classroom by the time Halloween's around, I'll be doing some of these activities. I'll be doing some online anyway, but I was hoping to actually do them like this. But we'll see, find out. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, there's, I've got a lot, and if, if you follow me on Instagram and in my Facebook page, I'm putting a lot of um, uh, Halloween products up this week just to sort of help you decide what you might want to do. Uh, but the other thing is also I am... Um, just going to show you what I would be, if it was me, and what I'm going to be doing in my classroom, as it in a couple of weeks. Now, a couple of things to take note of. So I'm going to do these activities with a couple of year groups. So I've got year seven and year nine that I'll probably do it with. We don't teach music in year eight at my school. They do visual arts. So that's why I'm saying year seven and year nine. So with year seven, we're doing film music. So it's very easy to link in Halloween and film music. Because there's things like any of the theme songs that go with any of those Halloween creepy creepy movies, okay? There's stacks of them out there, all right? Um, even Harry Potter, like, would certainly sort of um, fit into this. But the other thing is with my year nines, we're doing classical music this term. So, again, there's plenty of opportunity to actually do Halloween-type inspired music with those classes, and I will be, because, you know, if you're thinking about Dance Macabre, um, Oh, tubular bells um, which is again a theme song as well for the exorcist um, and there's a whole in, in the hall of the mountain king there's stacks of them out there that you can actually use which would be really really good for using with um, your classes for halloween okay so and i said this is fitting into the topics i'm already doing will i do it with my year 11 class probably not um I might, though, if we're looking at tension at the time, um, which is, you know, how is the concepts of music use tension? A lot of horror movie music really does use tension really quite well. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways you can actually use it. So as I said, I'm just going to share a few things with you just so you can um, see what I'm talking about. And I'm making sure I've got them up because I tend not to have them up. All right. So I've got a couple of things now. I'm just going to show you the PDF version first. Um, this is available in my store and I've got two sets that are um, very similar. Um, they just have different music um, that's attached to them. And I'm just going to show you one set, but the other set just has different pieces of music. So I'll show you that first. And it is this one now. And then I will show you also in a moment um, that you can actually, um, I've got this in two versions. One is as a PDF so you can print it off, but the other is a Google Docs version, which I'll show you that in a moment as well. So the thing is with this, what I like about it as a PDF, okay, is that when you click on those links, they're there. The music's there for you. So you can decide, oh, what am I going to do? You might decide to do something different, but here it is. The, the thing is it's there. We're actually going to look at this one tonight, Monster Mash, already, but um, but you can see there's a lot of different things. So again, you know, if in my classes, Monster Mash is perfect with my year sevens because then we can actually play it because it's four chords. G, E minus C, D. Like seriously, four chords that repeat, repeat, repeat. It'd be perfect classroom com um, thing to play. Um, but then, you know, as I said, Nightmare on My Street, you know, Tubular Bells. Um, sorry, that should have had a capital. Or even Time Warp because that comes from a movie as well. Okay, so I can do that with my year sevens and they would love it. So there's the links. So they can do, like, now the best thing about this is you choose how much or how little you want them to do as well. So for me, online learning, I'll show you what I'm going to do with my year sevens. They're going to do a fair bit of this other stuff, but my year nines, we're probably going to skip a lot of these. Okay, so background music information, music study. I'm going to show you one of these filled out, performer's name. And then we're talking about the elements of music. So we've got dynamics, harmony, melody, performing media, rhythm, structural form. I use structure. We're going to actually look at this one tonight because... This month, I'm looking at all things structure because I'm teaching that with my year nines. That's why. <laughs> Texture, tonality, and then a reflection. Now, I like to do this. I've been doing this a lot with my year sevens lately. Um, what do you like about music? What's your favorite part? What don't you like? 
um, whoops, sorry, my phone is just going off. Okay, and um, what images does this music make you see in your mind's eye? That's a really good one to actually ask them. So, and as you could, that's that's just um, the my credits, okay, page. So, as I said, that is what it looks like in PDF form. So, if you're in the classroom, now, I actually don't print a lot of things off. I know that sounds weird. I literally use that, that share, oh, sorry, I'll share screen again. What I do is I put this up on the board. I have the music playing in the background so they don't get to look at the, um, the music, okay? Have these up on the board, play it in the background, and then I leave this up on my interactive whiteboard. And then on my whiteboard, okay, we will actually answer the questions together and put those into their exercise books. And then we go from there. So I said, very rarely do I actually print that. Very, very rarely. It depends on the type of class I've got. Usually my lower ability students, I do because they um, struggle to write and, and, and don't cope copying from the board too well. Um, so as I said, but with my um, most of my classes, I just have the questions displayed. And then we go, okay, here we go. We're going to actually um, listen to this and answer the questions. And then we go from there, okay? And especially if I was doing that with my year sevens, I would do the questions. We'd listen to it, um, answer the questions, have another listen to it, and then go, all right, now let's play it. So once they've had it listened to it a couple of times, they've got the song in their head, and then we can actually have a go at playing it. So that's what I would be doing myself. Now, I'm just going to do that for a moment and get rid of that one. And sorry, I need to go to there. That's what I need to do. And it should be that one. Sorry, I'm just making sure the pages are up because it's a pain to actually, um, yep, yeah, that's the right one I need. Okay, I thought I had it up, but I didn't. Alrighty, so I'm going to share my screen so you can see the Google Docs version of exactly the same thing. Now, again, what I love about the Google Docs one, and this is what I like about it, so you can see it's the same thing. Okay, exactly the same thing. Again, those are clickable links. Okay, and you can see there. Um, now, gives you instructions. Now, I decide when I'm giving these to my kids, I'll make a copy of this document, keep my original, make a copy, and then I get rid of the pages I don't want. So if I didn't want to do, want them, like they don't need that page. So I literally delete it and go, all right, we're skipping that one. We're not going to use that one. Delete. Um, my year nines, I wouldn't get them to use this one, but I would get them to do um, maybe this one and maybe this one and this one. But, you know, depending on what the class is and whatever else, you just to delete the pages and go, okay, as long as you made copy, make a copy first, otherwise you'd be cranky with yourself. And then, as I said, you can see there that you've got all the same things that are in the other one. And they've literally got type your answer here. Be amazed how many kids still don't realize that they get rid of that and type their answer I, oh my goodness i still my head's boggling with that one okay and you can again you can see the thing now the other thing i do is oh i should go undo for that because i'm going to get that now i'm going to get copy that link now because if i was doing this with my kids or this is what i do with my kids okay um i would say okay so once whoops Monster, oh, my bad typing. Link here. Okay, I'll make that a bit bigger because I like, and I like it to be in the middle and I'll make it a bit bigger. And then the easy one to do, control K, control V and chuck it in there. And then you've got the link. So the kids don't even have to leave this page. It's actually there for them. So I do that all the time. So I do that. I would actually get rid of, all these things I just delete and then copy paste that link into each page so it's there for them. It just like it the, the easier you can make it for them, the better off you're going to be. All right, so I'm not going to play the song, but I'm just going to um, stop share for a moment because I'm pretty sure you all know um, Monster Mash. Okay, it was the Mash, the Monster Mash, the Monster Mash. Okay, but what I will do is I'll go here and I will show you some answers because we like it when we've got something that's actually done don't we Alrighty, and i will tell you i've learned a few things since doing things online again um with my kids because i couldn't believe how they were missing some really basic things all right so i've just put this one into powerpoint just so i can type into it for you and i'm going to go to slideshow 
Uh, where am I going from current slide? Sorry. Okay, so it's exactly the same thing. Again, the links are there. All right. So I just decided to get a picture. It doesn't look very good there. So if I was doing this, you know, this might be the kids that they might find a picture for it. Um, what I have found, and I said I wished I'd done this myself, sorry, um, is that where I've been doing type your answer here in my Google Doc, I've actually been colouring the box so that they can actually see it. Um, again, trying to make it really easy. But you can see here, so if I go back, so that's a picture. They had to find a picture. Name of the music, Monster Mash, genre or style, pop music. You could even say novelty pop. Okay, what makes the piece of music about Halloween? It's the lyrics are all about monsters and vampires and ghosts. Okay, this is the sort of answers we've been talking about. Again, another picture. I like that one better. And then um, here's the instruments used in the music. So sound effects, male lead vocals, female vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard or piano. And then interesting information. Again, you, you know, this is just some, um, depending on how much you want your kids to do, about what you actually want them to actually do. So, you know, original version sung by Bobby Pickett. It's been done by a lot of people, hit in 1962. It's a novelty song. It was number one the week before Halloween and has been a Halloween favourite ever since. And there are lots of versions of them out there. Okay, so again, performer's name. Again, this is just a, um, a bit of a research activity for the kids to do. Now, I'm not going to do this particular dynamics or harmony or melody or performing media, but you could. Okay, rhythm. But I did do structure or form. Okay, because that's what I'm thinking, of, focusing on this week. So what's the overall form of the music, or overall structure of the music? So it's song form. And then I've literally written down introduction, um, verse one, I should get rid of that, uh, chorus, verse two, chorus, verse three, verse four, chorus, verse five, chorus, verse six, chorus, and then a coda. And then I've also added there that it's in, it's performed using the ice cream chord change, which is the one, six, four, five, or if it's actually in G, G, E minus C, D. Alrighty, the instruments you can hear, you can see those there which is sound effects, male lead vocals, female backing vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard. And then list the instruments that are performing in the song. Now, I decided if I was going to do this with my kids, I'd probably say, let's ignore the introduction, but let's have a listen to the verse and the chorus, okay? But you could, if you want to do introduction verse two, you could do more sections, but generally two sections with my year sevens is about enough. So verse one had the male vocals, drums, um, bass, guitar, and keyboards. And then the chorus had the male vocals, drums, bass, guitar, keyboards, and then the female backing vocals were added. Okay, and as you can see, there's all the other bits and pieces there, which you could get them to do. But, wait, there's more. Okay, so I don't like to leave just answering questions there with my kids. So we might spend one lesson maybe listening to it um, and answering those questions as is, then and then play the song like start to learn to play the song and then the next lesson we'd probably come back and use that information we had and actually put it turn it into a paragraph writing about music because that's you know where I'm trying to head them and help them because it's a school-wide push to have literacy skills and build their literacy skills and then we'd play again okay so that's sort of generally how I would do my lessons so let me go to uh yes this one I think it was uh, where did I put it? Sorry, I will find where I have put this thing. I did have um, escape. I know I wrote, I had it all ready for us, I thought, but obviously I didn't. I thought I had it all out. Okay, here we go. I said I thought I had this one up. Here it is. All right. Sorry about that lovely people the joy of sharing screen okay so, so I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to show you um if I was writing the um getting the kids to write about it that look it depends on if we've actually done how to go ourselves um if I haven't shown them how to do it first we'll do it together first but the second time the next lesson if we did a different song and we listened and we had the answers, then I'd actually let them, I'd sit back and let them have a go on their own, okay, with a bit of help. And then, yes, yeah, so that um, I do, we do, you do, that whole model, okay, or um, is it guided, modeled guided 
independent, same thing. All right, let's face it, same thing. So let me just square, share my screen again. Okay, and I'm going to go to, oh no, I can't do slideshow because I can't type into it. Alrighty, so here's the elements of music. We know that. Now I said, I'm looking at all things structure this week. So that's why I've got here. So structure is the order and arrangement of parts, a different piece of music, and the form is exactly the same um, thing, okay? Now, we will go further into the mind maps later in the, um, in the month, but this is the mind map I use with my older students. So this refers to the types of structure, the range, role, register of the instruments, and um, then phrasing, ostinato, and diagram. And it actually spells tripod. That's why I use it, because um, in that order. Um, because it's one way, because a tripod is something that supports, it's a structure. Anyway, okay. All right, so let's have a look at this. I'm talking way too much, but I'm supposed to be. Otherwise, it'd be a bit boring, wouldn't it? Okay, so here we go. So these are just the questions that we had in that other page that we um, that I showed you. So what is the overall form of the music or structure, song form, introduction? And I need to get rid of that because we don't need that. Sorry. Verse one, chorus, blah, blah, blah. Then list all the instruments you can hear in the music, and you can see here they are. And what are the instruments that perform in section one? And what instruments perform in section two? Okay, so to put this into our um, music scaffold, main idea, understanding, specific samples, in-depth information, and connect to concept or element of music. Okay, so that's what we're going to use that information now to write a paragraph. All right, and this is exactly what I would be doing with my kids. All right, so we, again, we've already got that information. I've got that information there. So the first thing we need to do is our main idea. So we're talking about structure. So it would, might start with something like, I might get rid of that for the moment. Whoops. Mm. Otherwise, it's not going to be big enough for you to see. Now let's make that text a bit bigger. We don't need a bold. Hopefully this will be enough. Structure, whoops. Music refers to the order and arrangement of the different parts of the music. Okay, my bad typing, sorry. Okay, so that's what structure means. That's a main idea. That's as simple as that. Main idea. Here we go. Done. All right. So let's, um, yeah, we'll leave that. Then we've got to show, um, sorry, our main idea is music, a structure of music, and the, um, our understanding is defining what that is. Now, I'm going to actually introduce the song here because we've got a song. In, whoops, in the song, Monster Mash by the, this one was by the Grievy Ghoulies that I was listening to. The overall structure of the music is song form. Okay, so there's our thing. Let's get rid of that because we don't, we can ignore the other. All right, so structure of music refers to the order and arrangement of the different parts of the music. In the song Monster Mash by the Groovy Ghoulies, the overall structure of the song is song form. Now, depending on your kids, you might want to go, this means, and you might define that. So we might actually define what song form is. Um, music in song form, whoops, always do that. Song form is made up of uh, parts using a, or an introduction, verse, chorus, and coda. Okay, oh my bad typing, sorry. Here we go. So I'm gonna have to make that smaller because we're gonna run out of space. It's because we've only really done main idea, okay? But we have done this bit as well. So this is going into our samples and in-depth information. So we've said that the song, Music is in song form. It's made up of the parts using introduction, verse, chorus, and coda. You could even just go, the, the order of the parts are, and then copy all that over if you really wanted to. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, I'm going to also add, this song is also based on the ice cream 
could change using the chord progression made up of the I well, one four. Oh, sorry, that should be six. One, six, four, and five. Oh, might change that to and five. Oops, take that out of that chords. Again, we've just given a bit more information, but depends on how deep you want to go with your kids. Okay. I'd probably do with my year sevens, I probably wouldn't go into that ice cream cord thing, but I would with my year nines. Okay. I would with my year nines. Then I'm going to go into the instruments you can hear in the music. Uh, now, we could, again, depending on what you want to do, I don't see a point of saying what instruments you can hear are and then what instruments are in one section and one section. The reason I do get kids to do that, though, is because it's good to, for them to have an overall idea of what's in there and then break it down into what's each in each section. So I'm going to say in the first verse, instruments that you can hear are, and then I'm going to be naughty and copy this, paste it over here, and um, uh, I'm going to say the male lead vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard. Then I'm going to go in the instruments in the second, sorry, in the chorus, I should say, chorus, ah, uh, and then again, list them. Uh, the male lead vocals, female backing vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard. Now, you could have actually written that differently. You could have said, in the chorus, um, the all the instruments you could hear in the uh, verse are, are heard with the addition of the female backing vocals. Up to you how you want to do that. Alrighty. But the thing is, we've done main idea. We've shown, we've demonstrated our understanding of that main idea. We've then said what the overall structure is, okay, and given a definition of that. We've also then talked about the um, the ice cream cord change, okay, and what that actually is again sample in-depth information already we've talked about also the, the in the verse and the chorus what you can actually hear so we've actually answered all the questions all right all the things that um i would expect the kids to be talking about in structure if we're doing a paragraph now now the last bit is to connect to concept or the element so we're talking about structural form so why is this important so i like to think of it like this structure I, I usually say to my kids, why is structure important? And we have that discussion. Why is it important? Well, why do we need structure? And we have lots of different answers. And usually the answers are, well, it helps the, the um, you know, otherwise I don't know what to play. You're right. Um, otherwise you don't know how to compose the parts or arrange the song. Exactly. So we come up with an answer and we decide which is the best one. So structure in music is important because... Whoops. Because it helps the musicians know what section to play in what order. There you go. Simple as that. Really? Essentially, that was it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it over to here and I'm going to break it up into our. I'll make that a bit bigger, our music section, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. Well, that's a bit too big. All right, 28 will do. All right, so structure in music, that is, actually, I don't know, we have to do this too. Sorry, go. It's a bit easier when we do it in color. So structure in music is your main idea. So that's going to be our pink. All right, that's our pink thing. And this is refers to the order and arrangement of the different parts of the music. That is our understanding. And that's going to be in orange. Okay. That's our understanding of the main idea. 
So structure is the main idea. Our understanding of the main idea is in orange. It refers to the order and arrangement of the different parts of the music. In the song, The Monster Mash by the Groovy Ghoulies, so we've talked about that, the overall structure of the music is song form. So that really is a sample. Okay, so that's talking about a specific sample, something specific. But the in-depth information comes from the explanation of that, defining what that is. So that's where that green is going to come in. So the sample was in the song Monster Mash by the Groovy Ghoulies, the overall structure of the music is song form. Then it's defined. Music in song form is made up of parts using an introduction, verse, chorus, and a coda. And obviously we could include the middle eight, but this one didn't have the middle eight or a solo, so we didn't, I didn't add that in. So this song is also based on an ice cream chord change. So again, another sample, okay, in red. And this is using the chord progression made up of those chords, one, six, four, five. All right, so we are going to make that the green. Okay, because that's our in-depth information. In the first verse, the instruments that you can hear are, now that is our sample, okay? And then our in-depth information is telling us what it actually is. What instruments can you hear? The instruments are the male lead vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard. Oops, if I highlight that there so you can see. The next thing, the instruments heard in the chorus. So again, the next section, all right, so that's again our samples where we're talking about a specific sample, specific area in the music are those instruments, which are the male lead vocals, female vocals, guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard. And they're going to be green because that's our in-depth information. And then our last thing is connect to concert. Structure music is important because it helps the musicians know what section to play in what order. And you could say, like if this was something they had to talk about unity, giving, um, providing unity, um for the piece of music if it was something about um contrast or difference you again you could link it back to that saying structure music is important because it helps musicians know what sections to play in what order creating variety or difference or thing because each section section has something different or it might be the instruments or whatever you happen to want to actually add to that all righty so they're the different things you can actually add to it and again depends on what your actual focus is on this you might be comparing two versions of the same song anyway let's see all right so i'm just going to go here so thanks for watching so don't forget you can find music classroom resources ready for you to use over today in my teachers pay teacher store Okay, and you can click the link in the description below to go to my store, which is Julia Teaching Resources. But seriously, if you Google that, I'm the only one. Again, I shouldn't say thanks for watching again, but I will. And then I'm going to say you can find more information on structure or form over on in music over on my blog, juliajulia.com. Okay, and I'll give you a whole heap of information on what structure is. And it's really good if you are using that with your kids as well. All right, so I'm stopping share. All righty, so gone for nearly half an hour tonight. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, as I said, structure music. But the thing is, just because it's Halloween or just because it's something else doesn't mean you don't do other things, other musical things. So you don't just drop everything and do it. So I said, I'm going to be using Halloween songs, but we're doing music in the movies with my year sevens and classical music with year nine. So it just depends on what piece of music I'm actually going to use. Now, I said I am doing definitely um, structure with my year nine. So that's why I was focusing on that today, because I'm going to go through that with them this week. And the other thing is with year sevens, I will just depend on what questions we're doing. And because I'm doing things online, we'll probably keep it light and I probably won't actually do it, go and do the actual written part. I might get one of my classes to do it, the um, my really clever class, but my other class, we may not get that far. I think we'll be doing really well just to answer questions on the song. <laughs> just being honest, this is where they're at, okay? And as a teacher, we have to differentiate and meet our kids where they're at. So don't forget, you can come and... Um, you can, Join me every Tuesday night. I said I'm going to go live here and um, do some lessons and show you how I'm actually using my, my own products in my own class. I actually do use my products in my classes. I'm still teaching. I'm still in the classroom. Technically not in the classroom at the moment, but I am um, still teaching and being um, 
in the classroom with my music kids. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Even if you catch me on replay, I'd love to know if there's something you'd like to need to go through or something you'd like me to see or do um, in terms of um, yeah, a music lesson or how you might um, you might want some different approach on something. Let me know. I'd love to be able to um, actually help you in some way. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Um, I'm one of those weird people that likes teaching. So until next time, happy teaching. And I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources. And um, see you later. Thank you.